I recently watched some videos by Richard Dawkins about biological evolution, and it got me wondering, if evolution can supposedly develop a bird's wing or whale's tail, could it be used to develop a wind turbine blade? I've written software that essentially makes wind turbine blades live, mate, and die according to their power output. The question is, will they evolve into a good turbine blade? Before I get into my experiment, I need to give you a little bit of background. The turbine you see pictured here is called the Lens 2. In my research over the past few years, I've found that this is the simplest and most efficient blade you can use for a home size VOT, or vertical axis wind turbine. It's about 40% efficient. I've spent many computer hours trying to simulate this blade and improve upon its design. Nothing I do seems to improve it at all. This actually makes sense because Ed Lenz, the designer of this blade, has a wind tunnel in his home and he's probably spent as many hours as I have optimizing this blade. So the Lens 2 is my standard for excellence. If a good blade is going to evolve, I would expect it to look something like this. In my program, a blade shape is represented by 90 spines that are around a central point. The length of each spine is stored. The tips of the spines are connected with the skin, and that's what determines the blade's shape. When two shapes are mated, the lengths of the parent spines are combined in one of five mathematical ways to get the length of the child's spines. The function that's used is picked randomly and switches randomly approximately every tenth spine. Now besides combining the parent's characteristics, small mutations also occur. Uh, quite often, the length of a spine will change by a small amount. Less often, uh, a completely wild value would be put for the length of the spine. And finally, once in a while, the shape will be rotated a little bit one way or the other. This is my initial population of randomly generated turbine blade shapes. The red number under the shape is the amount of power that that blade produces. You'll notice that a lot of them are negative. That means they actually require power to make them turn in the wind instead of producing it. I made my random shape generator pretty wild so that no one could accuse me of pre-designing any of the turbine shapes. I think if you look over the shapes, you'll have to agree there isn't a good turbine blade in the lot. The breeding is done by randomly selecting six shapes. Each of the shapes is put on a virtual wind turbine and spun in the wind to measure its power. The meshing and simulation parameters that I use are just good enough to make a judgment on the shape's power and it takes about 20 minutes for my computer to test the shape. After the testing is complete, the worst turbine is always eliminated. Also, any other turbines that are especially bad die from starvation. In this case, only one shape is left and he's got no one to mate with in the group, so he's just returned to the population. Then the process repeats. Six more shapes are selected, the worst ones eliminated, any especially bad ones are eliminated, and we see who's left to mate. Of the shapes that are left, the one that has the highest power output becomes the dominant mater, and he gets to select his mate out of the group. In this case, he's only got one to choose from, but had he had a choice, he would have picked the one that was most like himself. Yes, shapes are prejudice. I wrote it that way because there are times when multiple species of shapes develop and they seem to do best mating with their own kind. When shapes mate, they can have zero, one, or two offspring, depending on the population. In this case, they had two offspring shown in yellow. So now let's watch things develop. In only this many mates, we've gone from a population that could barely make any power to a population where many of them are making power in the 20s. This is a significant improvement. At this point, a shape that I call a jellyfish has pretty much dominated the population. Uh, I let the simulation run for quite a long time after the shape shows up and it just never goes away. It's stuck on the jellyfish. Since it seemed to be stuck, I played God and caused a famine so that anyone who didn't make a power of 26 starved to death. 
and it practically drove them to extinction, but the jellyfish still stayed. So this is the final population, and this is the king of the jellyfish with a power number of about 27. So at this point I'm kind of disappointed, because frankly, this is a stupid looking blade. Now the forward direction is straight left, and everyone knows the round surface should face in the forward direction. Also, you never have rough edges on a turbine blade, they should be smooth. So I don't know why this developed this way. Now since I just spent two weeks of computer time developing this blade, and I generally don't like to just show those experiments that turn out the way I like them to, I decided I might as well take this to completion and do a high quality spin of this uh, turbine and see what its real power number is and then show you how much worse than the lens it turns out to be. Unlike the tests used during breeding, this one takes about 12 hours to do because the time step and the mesh is much finer. The final power number I get from the spin is 19.2, which is down quite a bit from the 27 that I got from the crude test. I went back to my high quality lens simulation and got the power number from that. I compensated for the slightly different uh, turbine sizes and ended up with a power number of 17.7. I was really surprised to see that the jellyfish beat the lens. In fact, this is the first time I've ever seen anything beat the lens. Now, I don't completely understand how this turbine works yet, but what I wanted to do is point out some of the interesting points that I've noticed. The first is how the air flows through the middle. Much of the time, it's going exactly in the right place across the right surface to pull the blade forward. The second thing I've noticed is the shape on the trailing edge of the blade seems to stop air motion and therefore uh, relative to the moving air everywhere else it generally has a high pressure behind the blade. Another thing I've noticed is the rough edge on the leading edge of the blade seems to cause a lot of turbulence and much of the way around uh, that's a low pressure zone in the front of the blade pulling it forward. The funny tilt on the round part of the blade also seems to have a purpose. It seems to help get rid of the high pressure area in front of the blade when going upwind. When I look at this blade, I find myself thinking or even saying, that's really clever, or that's ingenious, and I constantly have to remind myself there was no designer to this blade, it just evolved. I should probably make it clear that beating the lens in a 2D simulation doesn't necessarily mean that this blade is going to be better in real life. The lens is uh, tried and true technology and there are a lot of turbines out there making real power. Until this one's built and spinning on a real turbine, we don't know. This graph shows the power output versus tip speed ratio for the lens and for the jellyfish. I ran a second test, this time using a larger population. These are my starting shapes. Unfortunately, in this population, one of the random shapes happened to be a pretty decent turbine blade. What this did is it gave that one shape a head start at beating out all the other turbine blades before they had a chance to develop. Okay, here we go again. At this point I started limiting the population. Every day I would decrease it by 16. You just saw two weeks of computer time in one minute. Uh, this is the end population and the winner is this guy right here. I did a high quality test of this shape and he puts out about 15% less power than the lens does. The randomness in the algorithm seems to make the answer come out different every time I run it. I'll be running lots more of these just to see what develops. So anyway, I think the use of a genetic algorithm to uh, evolve wind turbines was a pretty good success. And I think I'll probably be using this method to solve other problems in the future. Thanks for watching.